Justino under center. Flames hoping to heat it up with a touchdown here. Justino again to McKnight. Touchdown, Liberty. James McKnight was a star receiver at Liberty University. Across the middle and it's complete to McKnight. Corner, it's McKnight, 45. Five, touchdown, Liberty. He even played nine seasons in the NFL. Not bad for a guy who only wanted to run track. I wanted to be the next Carl Lewis. James grew up in Central Florida and attended Apopka High School. There he split his time between football, basketball, and of course, track. I love track more. I was a 24 foot long jumper, almost a 50 foot uh, triple jumper. So I was more committed to track than I was football because you know, I hadn't even played varsity you know, until going into my senior year. Yeah, you heard that right. James played only one season of varsity football, but that one season was all that then Liberty head coach Sam Ritigliano needed to see. He sat in my mom's living room and he said, Miss McKnight, I don't care how long it takes him to graduate, as long as he's not getting kicked out of school, he's going to class, he's doing the thing that required of him, I'll make sure that he comes home with a, with a college degree. My mom looked at me and was like, you're going to Liberty. But what Coach Sam said next would grab James's full attention. He said, uh, Miss McKnight, I want your son to come play for me at Liberty University because I think he has the talent to play at the next level, and I'm not talking about college football. So now you got a 17-year-old kid looking, you know, bright eyed and bush tail like this man say he think I got the talent to play in the NFL. No one has ever said something like that, you know, to me and, and then saying that to my mom. So I was like, you know, you, you ain't lying to my mom in, in, in my house. James wasn't academically eligible his freshman year, but he would use that time to become a better player and a better student. When I was struggling in one of my classes, Coach Sam called his daughter Carrie, and he made Carrie um, tutor me. And so he's getting a, a re immediate report when he when she get home. As time again dumps it out. On the field, James was turning into exactly what Coach Sam expected, even if one infamous touchdown celebration drew the ire of his head coach. At that time, there was a commercial called a Nesty Plunge. Taste the taste of wetness. Take the Nesty Plunge. So we were like, okay, whoever score, yeah, we're gonna do the Nesty Plunge into the end zone. I ran the post corner, and I'm so far behind the safety and the defensive back. I opened up and fell back into the end zone. Crowd went crazy. My team went crazy. Coach Sam is over there like this. It's like everything in the stadium was moving except Coach Sam. And I tell you, man, that was the longest walk of my life to come from the end zone to the sideline. And he was looking at me. And in and, and all of my life, I think that was the, the only moment that I think he was most disappointed in me. And he looked at me and he's like, just get it across the line. That's good enough for me. And man, I tell you, everybody's slapping me on the head. They, they celebrating, oh, they you crazy, you know? They shaking me and I feel like I'm, I'm in the gutter, but I feel so low. It's at such a high moment. I don't plan this. You know, we orchestrated this right here. I practiced it in the, in, the, in the bed in the hotel room. I did it, I executed it, and I got all the glory. And I didn't give God the glory. And that's all that Sam cared about. And so after I calmed down, I walked back up to Coach Sam. And I was like, Coach, I was, I was like, I, I'm sorry. I said, I'll never disappoint you again. Went back to the locker room. Later that game, I got hurt. Missed the rest of the season. I've never celebrated again. After his senior season, James would sign a free agent contract with the Seattle Seahawks. He would prove to be a reliable receiver for several teams throughout his career. But early on, adjusting to life in the pros was a challenge. Nothing prepared me for that, <laughs> you know, because you, you went from structure, you know, dress code, you know, curfew and things like that at Liberty to, you know, the NFL and life coming at you fast and you got money. But I realized that I was the loneliest person at this club. I'm at this, you know, party with, with these guys, but it's like everything is moving in slow motion for me. And so I, I, I realized that, okay, God, you know, if you don't do something, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna fail out of this, this thing real quick. And then I started, you know, getting back into church, started getting back into a place where, all right, you, you're, you're my center, you know, I, I'm not playing for anyone else. And once I made that shift, it was kind of on, on cruise control. 
you know, my, my, my life was kind of centered, but it, it took about two, two rocky years to, to find that, that, that balance of work life, you know, balance because the NFL present you so many opportunities to, to go astray. I think that if Coach Sam didn't come along, man, I'd probably be dead or in jail or something because everybody in my community, you know, the stars were the drug dealers. Coach Sam was a godsend. And I look at him kind of like a prophet because he spoke into your life and the things that he said, he backed it up. He taught the gospel. He preached the gospel because he always did things that, that honored God. And so how can you not follow and look up to a man like that?